Hi, everybody. Um, I, my name is Liz Elizabeth Franz. I'm the editor in chief of DermStore.com. I am here today to talk with one of our favorite brands, Le Metier de Beauté, about summer makeup. So, right now, I have Mikey from Le Metier de Beauté. Mikey, want, want to introduce yourself? <laughs> yes, I'm the creative color director of Le Metier de Beauté, and I would love to welcome all of you to the exciting world of Le Metier de Beauté and perhaps entice you into being devotees of Le Metier de Beauté. <laughs> <laughs> not sound awesome. And then I also have uh, Sarah Suliger, who is one of our buyers. Sarah, want to say hi to everybody? Hi. It's a hard act to follow, but yes, I am one of the buyers here at Derm Store, and I am one of the biggest Le Metier fans, so I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. Yay. Okay, so Mikey, <laughs> we have a lot of questions for you today. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to start with one of them from our readers. You know, now that the summer months are upon us, Everybody is craving what they call a natural look. And, you know, being in the business, we know that a natural look doesn't always mean necessarily fewer products. Can you speak to that? Yes. Um, I would say a good 100% of the time, whenever I ask a client, how do you want your complexion to look? It's almost always natural. But natural to the average consumer means something different than what natural means to a professional makeup artist. To a professional makeup artist, natural means a little sheer tint of makeup, you can see your skin through it. To the average woman, natural means they're completely flawless, but it looks like you have no makeup on. <laughs> yep. There is a way to have both. Look like you have nothing on, like you just woke up in the morning, but you're 100% completely flawless. <laughs> Doesn't that sound good? That sounds amazing. That sounds like what I want to look like every single day. Um, so I, know, I know that at Le Metier, you have a very you have a special technique for creating a flawless complexion. Um, why don't you tell us about that? Well, we have a, a fan favorite. It's called Peau Vierge. Peau Vierge. Peau Vierge. Peau meaning skin in French. Vierge meaning purity. It is what the press calls a BB cream. It's a little bit of sunscreen. It's a little bit of makeup. It's a little bit of anti-aging, and it's all in one. I have it right here. It's in a little silver um, container. Um, it doesn't really require too much blending because it's just a tint. I think women love it because they can throw it on and run their errands and have a little bit of makeup on and some sunscreen, a uh, little anti-aging ingredient there. Wear it for a few days in a row. The skin looks younger. Um, but when I step in and um, people want a little bit more, I blend it with what we like to call the beautiful fantasy of full coverage, but looks like you have no makeup on. People want the fantasy, not the harsh reality of full coverage. <laughs> I want the fantasy for sure. So the key, if you're looking for a tip, is we have a very unique brush. I'm not a big fan of most foundation brushes. Most of them skip the ergonomic corners of the human face. And that's because they're not made for the human face. Typically, they're made for canvas. This one, if you can tell on camera, it has maximum stretch and contraction. It can bend to the ergonomic corners of the human face. It literally thins out full coverage. Ultimately, it will look like you have nothing on, but you'll be completely covered. The nice thing about Le Métier de Beauté is we really think people care not a whole lot more, to be honest, but a little bit more about what they're putting into their body and into the environment. If you fall asleep wearing the beautiful fantasy of full covers, the only side effect is you wake up with softer, more supple skin. <laughs> Perfect. So that, that is amazing. And Sarah, <laughs> I know that the Povierge is one of your favorite products, and you've told me in the past that you like it so much because it actually does improve your skin. Uh, what else do you love about this product? Yeah, exactly. It's so rare that I feel like I can wear makeup that actually helps my skin and I wake up the next day and I feel like my skin looks better. Usually it's the complete opposite with makeup. <laughs> and I have to say that I love the fact that this product has retinol in it. So as we know, that's pretty much the secret weapon for fine lines, wrinkles, evening out all of your skin tone. And the other thing that's fantastic about the Povierge Tinted Luminizer is that the typical sunscreen has, you know, that kind of white, dull effect, and it kind of gives your face a very dull look. But the Povierge Tinted Luminizer SPF has gold flecks, and their sunscreen is tinted with gold flecks. 
So it's fantastic because it gives you kind of a bronze dewy look and you don't at all look dull. Sounds amazing. Fantastic. So now that we've covered foundation, let's talk about blush. I feel like blush is one of those things like mascara. Pretty much all of us wear it. Uh, maybe not all of us know the right way to apply it. Mikey, I know that you recommend actually avoiding trying to contour using blush, and you, you recommend applying it higher up on the cheekbones. Can you tell us why? Well, contour looks really cool if you're playing Yankee Stadium or <laughs> during a <laughs> runway performance. Um, generally speaking, when you say contour here, it makes beautiful teenage models look 10 years older. They look like they're 25 so we can sell products to grown-ups. When a grown woman who's grown already does it, it makes her look 10 years older, harsher, more masculine. The key to, to wearing makeup, um, particularly as a professional makeup artist, I have a couple goals in mind. Number one, make the client look more youthful, softer, and increase femininity. That's important because a lot of people think that just putting blush on is instantly going to make them look more womanly, but sometimes it gives people that female impersonator look. <laughs> <laughs> I totally know it can be not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so blush goes right here. That's where human beings blush. Nobody blushes over here. That's not natural. We do that for theater. For the theater. <laughs> or reality, here, little kids blush super high on the cheek, so instantly it makes everyone look really youthful, softens the features of the face, looks more feminine. When you go towards the ear, it makes the face hollow, harsher, older, and more masculine. More very um, Captain Jack-like. <laughs> what you're saying is that we should basically, we should be applying blush like, here. Oh, like right here underneath our eyes then. I mean, not underneath our eyes, but... As close to the right eye area as you can get before it's actually in the eye area because it's optically... Oops, sorry. <laughs> optically raising the face. So it lifts the face when you put the color here. And naturally, children blush a little bit higher than grown-ups do, so it looks very youthful and soft. This I is use a little round eye. brush to just do, do, and then you just sort of blend it out it's very, very simple, natural. It's where people blush. Nobody blushes in the contour. It doesn't look natural. That is an excellent point. Okay, so now that we've covered blush, actually, let's take a question, another question from our audience. And this is an age-old dilemma that I'm always reading something different when I see this question. When is the appropriate time to apply concealer? Do we put it on before <laughs> our foundation, or do we put it on after our foundation? Um... Every professional makeup artist that I've ever known in my 20-year career, we do it last. We do it over foundation and powder. However, there's no absolutes. Um, if we're speaking specifically to the Le Métier de Beauté concealer or corrector, it's made to work on top of layers of makeup and powder without cracking. There's elasticity in the formula. It's able to bend with the muscle contraction of the human face. Typical concealers are just made with the mineral oil. Mineral oil is what beefs up the opacity and the coverage, so they really cover. Unfortunately, mineral oil is the very first thing that reveals itself in a line in the eye area. So if you want to avoid that, use a powerful pigment, but something that is very buoyant, so it doesn't get stuck in a, in a line. So it works over makeup, and it works under makeup as well. Preferably, I like to roll it on top of makeup because after you wear foundation and powder, you have to really look at your reflection and say, hmm, maybe I'm covered enough. Because sometimes I would rather see a little bit of purpleness and an ugly blob of concealer. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. Okay, so to recap, when readers, listeners, audience out there, when you're looking for an under eye concealer, Look for one without mineral oil. That way uh, you won't accentuate your fine lines. Well, it's really difficult because I, as I was saying, most concealers are made with it. It gives the beautiful coverage, but it's the first thing that reveals itself in a line. So. And your concealer, your concealer has shea butter and vitamin E, correct? I mean, when you... Correct. So that, 
fantastic. That mimics the the mineral oil, but it does not slide instantly into the line. It, it pretty much bounces on top of the line. If after hours of wearing the concealer, you see it in a line, you just touch it and it bounces out. It's very buoyant. Sounds amazing. I need some of that. Okay, <laughs> another daily essential for most of us is eyeliner. Uh, I personally love liquid eyeliner. I feel like getting a thin enough line that's appropriate for an office daytime look is uh, pretty much half the battle, if not three quarters to the battle, or all the battle. <laughs> At Lamentia, you have a technique that involves uh, using or applying a dotted line of the eyeliner. Can you tell us how that works? Um. Yes, most people will yank their eye and then draw a line. Number one, there really shouldn't be any rubbing or tugging or pulling or yanking on your eyelid. That's the first thing that loosens that poor little skin in the eye area. <laughs> so you want to avoid yanking your eyelid and drawing. For most people, if you try to draw liquid eyeliner on, there's a 100% chance it's going to look terrible. <laughs> the key is to not draw remove drawing from the equation. You, um, I was trying to see, I don't have one handy. I've got one. Uh, fantastic. So, um, Sarah, can you show them? Yeah. Instead of yanking your eye and using the point, relax it on the flat, comfortable side. No yanking. Am I doing okay? Well, you're still tugging on, okay. the, on the eye. <laughs> you just lay it on the flat side, so you're actually using the side, not the point. Okay, that's there a great you go. Use the side and not the point. Yeah, I'll show you. I have a pencil, so i just show you on myself. Yeah. So instead of yanking and doing this, you lay it on the flat side. You kind of look down, and you just sort of lay it on the lash bed and touch sort of like a dotted line, connecting the line. It creates perfection, because only perfection will suffice. Nobody <laughs> wants a wonky liner. <laughs> if you draw it, you know, most likely going to get very wide as you try to straighten it. It gets uh, wider and then more crooked and then wide and then crooked. It's a mess. So in order to get it to be perfect, you lay it on the side and you just stuff it into the lash bed and connect the little tiny line. It's fast, easy, and it looks perfect. Awesome. So Sarah, I know that Le Metier's liquid liner is one of your absolute favorite beauty products. Uh, can you tell us about any of your other favorites from the brand? There's so many. I could go on for days here, but I uh, brought a couple of my favorites, and we already touched on one of them, and that's the concealer. Concealer's fantastic. I keep it with me in my purse because it's, you know, compact. And what I love is the texture. It's super, super creamy. It goes on absolutely super soft on your skin. It's nourishing and it really does set well. So underneath my eyes, I can put that on in the morning. I don't crease and, you know, it lasts all day. I can touch up where needed. And my favorite way to apply it is with a concealer brush. I feel like it just gives a much more natural and it gives you a little bit more coverage, but it blends much nicer on your skin. So I definitely recommend this concealer. And an added perk is that it's SPF 18. So, you know, we're typically using this around our eyes and really gentle areas on our face. So it's fantastic to be using SPF in those areas. And another product that I am obsessed with is the Sheer Brilliance Lip Glosses. And that color is Pinky Promise. And I, I seem to gravitate back to that color every time I look through my collection. I feel like it's the perfect pink. And it has amazing pigment. And it's very glossy. And it lasts. So, you know, you can't really, it's rare that a lip gloss will have all of that for you. And I love it because I get lazy and I don't want to put on lip liner and lipstick, especially during the summer. So that's kind of my go-to. <laughs> Put that on, and you're good to go. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sarah. I think that about wraps it up today. Thank you also, Mikey, for joining us. Yay, that was so cute and cheerful. <laughs> <laughs>
And in case anybody was wondering, you can find every product that we talked about today and all the other Le Métier de Beauté products on dermstore.com. We also have more than 700 other brands and all orders ship for free all the time. So give us a visit. Go shopping. Yay. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks again. All right. Bye. Thank you.